Hi guys, this is a very special episode because it's all about butterflies. I do want to say before I start, I will be using information from the Butterflies of Tennessee Field and Garden Guide by Rita Venable. I highly recommend this book if you are a uh, butterfly gardener or just a wildlife enthusiast. So let's get started. So I went to my parents' home for the day and I filmed some butterflies. Now, the reason why I did this, other than just to visit with family, of course, is she, my mom, that is, had mentioned that the Eastern Tiger Swallowtailed Butterflies were out and about, like, going crazy at their house. So, naturally, I took my good camera and decided to go over there and film. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, right here, you are seeing two Eastern Tiger Swallowtails uh, doing what is known as puddling. Um, puddling is where the butterflies bring up nutrients through their proboscis, uh, through a liquid source, um, through a puddle or a marshy area or a swampy area or something like that. Um, and this is on my parents' property. Um, and as you can see in the background behind the eastern tiger swallowtails is another type of butterfly. Um, and if you have the Butterflies of Tennessee guide, you can actually identify that butterfly as well. I have not done that yet. Um, so we're just going to be talking about the ones that I've identified in this video, which are the Eastern Tiger Swallowtails, and later you will also see my second favorite butterfly, which is the Zebra Swallowtail. Um, first of all, I do want to say that the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is my favorite butterfly that is local to my area. Um, I live in East Tennessee and we have a huge variety of butterfly species here but to me by far the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail which you can see here is a beautiful butterfly. It's uh, yellow and black and has some blue markings on it as well and even some kind of orange or reddish markings as well. Um, it is a swallowtail, and, it, and all the swallowtail species are called that because of the little tails that come off them that look like swallowtail. Um, so, first of all, um, from what I have researched online and in the Butterfly Field Guide book, basically, typically, it's the males that do the puddling um, from all the research that I've seen anyways. So I can only assume that these are males because I am not an expert yet in dif differentiating between the males and the females of the butterflies. It seems as though from my research that the males puddle, uh, oh, there's some, some kitty cats staring at us through the window. Seems as though from my, re my research, the male butterflies typically puddle and drop nutrients in that way more so than the females. And not only that, but the males are typically looking for females um, to mate with, while the females get nectar from flowers and lay eggs on host plants. That's very important to talk about, host plants. So when you're doing a butterfly garden, from all the research that I've done so far over this past year, um, it is not just <laughs> important to have nectar plants, it's also very, very vital to have host plants. So I personally in on my patio have two potted black cherry wild black cherry trees. Wild black cherry trees are native to my area and are a host plant for the eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly. Now whether or not they'll actually lay their eggs on it is another story. There are a lot of factors that go into them picking plants to lay eggs on. And I currently don't have the knowledge um, of, of how they sniff out those plants. So I've provided them on my patio and if they use them then that is just great for me and an added bonus. And of course as many host plants as you can get in your yard the better because you're going to attract more butterflies. Now let's talk about the host plants for the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly aka my favorite butterfly from my area and I'm gonna flip through this book and tell you word for word from this book because 
this book, Butterflies of Tennessee, has so much information in it, and I highly recommend it to everyone. Um, the host plants section says, reported host plants include plums, black, pin, and choke cherries, hawthorn, common apple, eastern cottonwood, American hornbeam, hickories, American basswood, um, so southern catalpa, <laughs> I can't say that word, tulip poplar, cucumber tree, sweet bay magnolia, spice bush, sassafras, white and green ashes, common lilac, common hop tree, common prickly ash, and black oak. Um, the reason why this book is so great is because I have looked and looked on the internet for the host plants of this butterfly and I've seen only a fraction of a list um, for the host plants when I look online. But this book has way more host plants listed and so I think this lady has done her research and has given us all the possible host plants for this butterfly which is amazing because like I said when you look online it's it's pretty difficult to um, see a list this long. Uh, typically online I just see cherry, oak, ash, um, hop, you know, things like that. And uh, that's it. Uh, they don't ever, like I've never seen them actually mention cucumber tree, um, for example, uh, spice bush, uh, or lilac online. So I find it very, very helpful, this book. Um, also, it says that the habitat for the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is gardens, parking lots, paved roadsides, weedy or brushy fields, dappled woods, wetlands, riverbanks, and lake edges. Um, as you saw in the beginning of this video, we crossed uh, a lake. Uh, we crossed a bridge on the way over to my parents' house. And um, so there, there's a lot of water out there. And there's a creek right near their house, too. So that really helps a lot. Um, now, in this footage, you're seeing an eastern tiger swallowtail next to a zebra swallowtail. The zebra swallowtail is the black and white striped, obviously looks like a zebra stripes, uh, with the red marking near its tails. Um, it is a lot more elusive than the eastern tiger swallowtail from my experience. I had to try multiple times to get footage of the zebra swallowtail, whereas for the eastern tiger swallowtails, they were tricky to get them to land and calm down, but they would stay pretty much at that puddle. Whereas the zebra swallowtail hid from me multiple times, and I had to be extremely quiet to get footage of it, and even then it was very sporadic with its flight patterns, its moving patterns, almost jittery. Um, so I would describe it as having a different... Um, B being more, I guess, um, timid than the eastern tiger swallowtail. Not really sure why that is, but from my experience that's how it was because you couldn't I don't think you could really tell in the footage but there were actually three eastern tiger swallowtails in total in the area and only one zebra swallowtail and right there you can see the zebra swallowtail with the pollen all over his little face so cute but I want to talk about the zebra swallowtail so the host plants for the zebra swallowtail are uh, pawpaw trees that's it um, as far as we know only pawpaw trees are the host plants um, and there's another type of butterfly right there. Uh, I haven't identified it yet either, but I'm sure it's in this book. But the zebra swallowtails only host on the pawpaw trees that we know of. And pawpaw trees are really interesting. I think they are the largest fruit that's native to either Tennessee or the United States. I'm not exactly sure, but it is a very interesting plant. And the fruit, obviously, it's edible. It's a type, you know, it's, you know edible fruit. So it's not just like the biggest fruit, it's like the biggest edible fruit native to here. Um, and it was actually eaten by a lot of the founding fathers, interestingly enough. And so that is the host plant for the zebra swallowtail. Um, I've heard rumors that the blooms of the of the pawpaw trees smell like rotting meat, but I don't know how accurate that is because I have talked to butterfly gardeners on Facebook and they say they haven't noticed any bad odors from their pawpaw trees so maybe I'll plant one eventually because I was hesitant because of the rumors about the bad smell um, so we'll just have to play that by ear but uh, gardening tips for uh, zebra swallowtails 
are to plant pawpaw trees which grow 15 to 20 feet or more and like part shade. Zebra swallowtails nectar on eastern redbud, hoary pecan, pawpaw, zinnia, buttonbush, flea vein, eastern blue star, Jacob's ladder, white clover, orange and common milkweeds, low bush, blueberry, pepper vine, blackberry, and purple phacelia. Um, the short adult proboscis cannot access long tubed flowers. It's very important to remember for the for the zebra, sorry, the zebra swallowtail. Um, and I did not know that they nectared on blackberry, which is actually extremely good to know because my parents, um, while I was there, I noticed that they had a a huge, huge section of their property that was blackberries, which was just covered in blackberry bushes um, that were about to bud out. So another great source of food for the zebra swallowtail adult butterfly. Um, and I'm sure there's probably wild pawpaws growing on their property somewhere because they've got 13 acres and a lot of it is just wooded. Um, but back to the eastern tiger swallowtail really quick because I didn't mention the nectar plants for that one. Um, favorite uh, host plants in Tennessee for the eastern tiger swallowtail, back to the host plants again. Um, but the favorite host plants in Tennessee specifically for the eastern tiger swallowtail are the black cherry and tulip poplar, both of which grow to be very tall. 60 feet for the black cherry and 90 feet for the tulip poplar. Sweet Bay Magnolia is smaller and has fragrant blooms. Eastern tiger swallowtails are large, hungry adults that visit a variety of flower restaurants, <laughs> such as Mexican Sunflower, Virginia Bluebell, Orange, Common, and Swamp Milkweeds, Bluette, Buttonbush, Blackberry, Joe Pieweed, Purple Coneflower, Rose Verbena, Dandelion, White and Red Clovers, American bladder nut, big leaf snowball, snowbell, sorry, Jacob's ladder, ironweed, mountain mint, <laughs> woodland flocks, eastern red bud, purple phacelia, wild geranium, goldenrod, lyre leaf sage, white crown beard, rosenweed, abelia, blazing star, lantana, hydrangea, pink diamond specifically, flame azalea, bee balm, dwarf larkspur, zinnia, giant hyssop, virgins, bow, bower, bower, and fruit tree blossoms. Um, so the reason I'm telling you guys all of this is because if, if any of you are interested in butterfly gardening whatsoever, I highly recommend it. It's really fun, it's really rewarding, and you get to see all this wildlife in your yard, not just the butterflies and caterpillars, but other things as well. Don't forget that if you are a butterfly gardener, do not be turned off by chewed up leaves because it's gonna happen. If you wanna host the caterpillars, which in turn makes the butterflies stay in your yard longer and linger more, then you're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit of leaf crunching. And I would suggest just planting extra large drifts of the plants instead of just one or two plants here and there because that will help maybe alleviate the hungry caterpillars' appetites. But I did want to mention one more thing before I go. The zebra swallowtail, back to that one, the black and white striped one with the red. The habitat is as follows. Zebra swallowtails fly in rich forests with creeks or rivers where pawpaw grows. Males fly along forest roads, trails, and hilltops searching for females, while uh, which are searching for pawpaw. Zebras nectar in gardens, weedy fields, meadows and campgrounds, wooded swamps, or along roadsides. The sociable male zebras have been observed puddling in damp areas at lake edges or along river banks with other zebras, other swallowtails, other butterflies, and bees. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like um, down below and let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of butterflies are native to your area and I will see you guys next time. Bye! So before I go, I just want to shout out my patrons. They're on the screen right now and I just want to thank them so much for supporting me. They're always so super kind and sweet and they help me out a lot. Thank you guys so much for being patrons.